everyone and welcome to the latest MoTeC webinar. Today's topic will be how to set up cam control and this is part one. Um, if you look on our webinar archive you will notice that I've got a, a, another what is cam control so that was like the, uh, the webinar I did before this just to sort of explain what the ECU is trying to do. Uh, with this next series of a few um, webinars, I'll be going through how to actually set up the cam control function of the ECU. Just for some topics today, uh, I'm just going to run through a bit of basic information of what you need to know. Um, most of this is pretty simple, but uh, I'm going to add those bits in here anyway. Um, Checking the original vehicle. So a couple of checks that's always good to do if you have the original vehicle um, available to you. Uh, engine running and also the input setup. So I'm going to stop this webinar once we've set up the input or, or more or less just the cam position measurement. Uh, the next webinar will be on outputs and then tuning and a few other things. But for this today, we're just going to be worried about getting the ECU to read the cam position at all. Just some basic information to start with, is, and this is more or less the, the sort of conversation we'd probably have over the phone if someone rang me up and was uh, starting to get their cam control system up and running. I'm going to need to know, obviously, how many variable cams, or more or less if you, if you can tell me what engine you have. Um, what type of actuation. Now, generally speaking, the variable cams that we deal with mostly are an oil solenoid where they use the engine's pressurized oil supply to move the cams. As I went through in the, the previous cam control webinar, there's a couple of other types that we've been doing and, and some of them work and some of them we, we don't really deal with. But 90% of the variable cams you'll be dealing with will be a shuttle type oil control valve. If you would like a bit more information, just simply go to our website and download the What is Cam Control webinar and have a look at that. Um, quite important, does the ECU you're using have the cam control upgrade? Now it's only the M400, the M600, the M800 and M880. Um, these are the only MoTeC ECUs that do continuously variable cam control. Um, another thing, and I suggest again that you watch the previous webinar, um, have the cams been changed or modified? You have to be very careful of the, of the cam system, especially if you're putting in larger cams, because as I mentioned in the previous webinar, all these engines from factory are de designed to be non-interference, which basically means if the cam control solenoid shorts out to either ground or power, no matter where the cam goes, the valves will not hit the top of the pistons. Now, if you have modified the engine for larger camshafts, you may have to modify the actual actuator in the engine to limit the range of these variable cams to suit the size of your new cam. If you don't, it can result in quite catastrophic engine failure. So be very careful of anything that's been changed or modified. Now, checking the original vehicle is, is something that's um, it's more something that we would do here, but you know we've got some pretty smart operators out there who, who like to sort of do these things themselves. So as a bit of a, a, a guide as to what extra information is always helpful, um, if you have a correctly running factory vehicle, we would have an oscilloscope, and with the engine running, um, we would be looking at things like what type of control signal does the East factory ECU have for the cam output. Now, if you look at my little oscilloscope picture there, you can see it's a nice, simple square wave. Generally speaking, to move the cams, the duty cycle of that square wave would change, and that changing duty cycle is what the ECU is actually doing or calculating. Also, you need to know what is the frequency of the cam control signal. So we've got a varying duty cycle signal that sends out, you can see there's five pulses there. 
So those, how many pulses per second or, or what hertz the valve operates at um, is kind of a, a characteristic of the, the mechanical system. So what we would always recommend is if you had a system that we hadn't characterized, what you first got to work out is what is the frequency of the factory system. So then we can sort of just simply chuck those numbers into our setup so we know when we're tuning, we're more or less doing what the factory guys would have done and we're not going to have any uh, cam position tuning problems um, based on the fact that we're using the wrong frequency for that uh, particular system. So it's quite important. Um, but like I said, most of the time uh, we will be able to provide that information for a particular engine. Engine running. Now, what I quite simply mean by this is you need to have the engine running first once you put your MoTeC ECU on. So all your normal setup should be done, or your ref, your sink, your ignition, fueling, all that kind of thing. You don't need the cam position or cam control to make the engine run, but to set up the cam control and the cam position, the engine must be running. So basically what I'm saying is if you completely and utterly forget about all the cam control stuff and simply do your ref and your sink, your normal injector, your normal ignition setup, turn the engine over, get the thing to idle, it will work perfectly fine without the cam control working. Um, you know, the cams might be in the, in the wrong position for, you know, the best performance, but the engine will still run. Now, you can't set up the cam position or the cam control until that engine is running. Effectively, it's like, let's say it's, it's a dynamic tuning process. So even to get the cam position working, the engine needs to be running. So it also, and to be more specific with MoTeC terminology, the engine needs to be synced or synchronized you know, as in the ref sync's working, there's no ref sync errors, before the ECU will even attempt to do any kind of uh, cam position or cam control calculations. Input setup. So basically this is our, our major topic for today, um, doing the inputs to measure where the cam actually is. So. Each cam that is be, to be controlled needs a position sensor. So, you know, if I have four variable cams, let's say I've got my example there, the Holden Allotech V6, that's got, it's a V6, so it's got two banks, four cams, both the inlet on both sides and the exhaust on both sides, they're fully controlled. So there will be four sensors that are measuring cam position. Now the interesting thing for this engine is that we have, you can see in my list, we have a crank sensor, so your ref, okay, that's fairly normal. Now the left inlet cam is the sink, but we actually use the sink for two jobs. One for our engine position, our normal sinking to make the engine run, and we're also using that sink sensor as a cam position. Now the thing to remember is that sink trigger pattern moves with the cam. So this is where it comes into the, the right ref sync mode, where we will write a mode to say, you know, we have a certain pattern on the crank sensor for the ref, and we have a certain pattern on the sync sensor for engine synchronization. But we have to allow for the fact that that sync trigger pattern will move with the cam. Now, if you take something like um, the Honda K20A, it only has a variable inlet cam on the earlier engines and the exhaust cam doesn't move. So what they do to possibly to make things easier is they put the sync sensor on the exhaust cam so that doesn't move at all. So you do your engine synchronization and your engine position you know to make the engine run from the exhaust cam but then it has a separate sensor on the inlet cam which moves around. So effectively in that engine we would have a ref input, a sync input, and then a separate inlet cam position into digital one. So what we have is, what we always have a sync. Now whether we use that sync for cam position as well or not um, depends on the engine. But in my Holden Alloytech V6 example, you can see we've got our left inlet cam as the sync, and we're going to use that as engine position, our normal synchronization and also 
that in left inlet cam cam position and then you can see I've added left exhaust right inlet and right exhaust into the digital inputs so the digital inputs will measure the cam position of those other cams um, has to be a digital input it can't be an analog voltage it can't be a switched and it can't be an analog temperature and also um, for the people out there who might want to get um, fairly smart about it. You can't also do it via a CAN message either, just in case anyone had the idea. So, into our MoTeC software now, and um, I'm hoping that on your screens uh, those numbers show up, but um, probably not too much of a matter. In uh, the purple there, down the side, I have more or less which menus you go through to get to where I am in the software. So if you were following me along with your you know, M400 software open, you would go to adjust, digital input functions, and digital one. So in function, we have function 19. And function 19, if you press F1 for the explanation, will say that this is a cam position measurement. So this is the input that we'll be setting up today for this webinar. Now, I'm in parameters now. I, you can see in purple there I've changed screens. Now, I'm sort of doing these out of order. Um, it, uh, it might look a little weird, but it's more or less the order in which we would set them up. Um, the order they're in the software is kind of dependent on the background software. So I will sort of set this up in the order that's probably, you know, most suitable. So the first thing we're going to set up is the channel. Now this is telling the ECU, okay, digital position 1 is function 19, so that's a cam position. So the channel tells the ECU, okay, which cam exactly are we going to be controlling or reading with this particular input. So you can see in the box down the uh, right hand side we've got all of our options. So we can have an inlet and exhaust or if we've got a V engine or a boxer engine we've got our left inlet, left exhaust, right in it right exhaust etc. The most important part about this and will be um, make a bit more sense after the uh, the output webinar that I'll be doing later on um, is you need to make sure that you've got this wired. If you say that the channel for digital input one is the left inlet cam you need to make sure it's wired to the left inlet cam because subsequently you need to make sure that if you call an output as the control for the left inlet cam, you need to make sure that's also wired to the left inlet cam. Otherwise, you know, you've got position feedback for, you know, the wrong camshaft. So you've got to make sure the input and the output match what they're actually wired to. Okay, it's very important. Okay. The next parameter that we would uh, set up would be the edge. Now, if we have a cam position uh, sensor, um, let's say it was a hall sensor, we've got to choose which edge is the most relevant to the job we are doing. So it's a similar kind of idea to the ref sync. So in the ref and sync, we would specify an edge to for the ECU to use when it's um, you know deciphering the cam and crank sensors or the ref and sync. Now this is the same kind of idea here we are telling the ECU which edge of this signal is specific to this job. Now, this edge is a separate setting from the ref and sync setting. So don't think that because you have, you know, your sync sensor set up as a, a falling edge that you have to have the cam position off the falling edge as well. Now, if I just flick to the next uh, slide, this will make a bit more sense. Now, this is a, a ref sync capture of the, the what is becoming the fairly classic BMW Mode 17. It seems to, to show up on uh, many engines. And you can see there in blue we've got a, a 60 minus 2 crank sensor. But in uh, the orangey colour there, you can see that the, uh, the sync sensor actually has four teeth. Two of them are short and two of them are long. Now, the reason for that is... For synchronization, we would be using the rising edge. Now you'll notice that the rising edges are unevenly spaced. 
So the uneven sort of pattern gives us the ability to recognize different parts of that pattern. But for cam position, we realistically need evenly spaced edges. So if you look at my arrows, those arrows are more or less evenly spaced. So we have four per crank cycle, 720 degrees. So we are going to measure the cam position off the falling edge, but we are going to measure the synchronization off the rising edge. So in this situation, we've got the, the edges. We're using both edges, each of them separately and each of them for a different job. So it's the evenly spaced edges that we need to use for the cam position measurement. Okay, number of teeth. Uh, this is quite simply, uh, the explanation of this is, is how many teeth are we using for the cam position measurement. So if I just duck back to my uh, previous slide with the BMW mode, for 720 degrees, um, we have four evenly spaced edges. So just jumping forward again. So we're going to say we have four teeth. Now, again, with a bit of similarity to the ref and sync modes, what we are talking about is the uh, what how many teeth would there be if they were evenly spaced? For the BMW mode, it's quite easy. There's four nicely evenly spaced teeth. But uh, if I go to my next page, and my example here is some of the way the BMW engineers did their uh, variable cam six cylinder engines. You can see I have my three different examples used at various times. They have A, B, and C. Now, the first one is six evenly spaced teeth. So quite simply, our number of teeth is six. B is what we would call a six plus one. So it has six evenly spaced teeth in with the green dot. And with the red dot there, we have an extra tooth. Now, that extra tooth would be, again, for synchronizing the engine. But we, for the purposes of cam position, are only going to say six teeth we're going to ignore that extra tooth and the software is set up as such. Thirdly, numbers, well, letter C there, we, you can see that we have five evenly spaced teeth and then one missing. So where that red dot is, if you can imagine there was a, there was a tooth there, but it was cut off, again, that would be used for a actual engine synchronization um, sort of purpose. But for the purposes of cam control, we are going to say that there's six teeth. Um, again, the ECU software sort of assumes, okay, well, there was supposed to be a tooth there, um, and it would update its calculations knowing that one of them is actually missing. So what we have there is six teeth as a setting in our ECU as well. So three of those slightly different uh, trigger patterns, all with six teeth. Now, another, let's just say, if you want a, a, a quite simple way of uh, setting up the number of teeth, if, you, if you're not entirely sure, you can, and I'll just jump back one uh, place here, you can continue to change that number while the engine is running. If that number is wrong, let's say instead of four, we had two, you know, we're out by a factor of two here, you would find that the cam position measurement will jump around between two different measurements. So what I can say, and this is, again, a fairly rough way of doing it, but it might get you out of trouble if you're not entirely sure, you can try each number until you get a nice, smooth cam position. It's not the correct way to do it, but in a pinch, it's, it's something you could do. If you can't get a stable cam position reading by doing that, then you probably set something else up wrong. It's probably a good idea to, you know, just take a bit of a pause and maybe give us a call or send support an email or something like that. But um, yeah, that number needs to be right because that's uh, more or less the cam position. Now, filtering. This is a, a filter 
for the actual cam position measurement. So if it's if it's bouncing around a bit, maybe the engine's running a bit rough, or maybe just um, the tolerances in the engine aren't that great, and you know your cam position measurement is bouncing around a bit, you can actually filter that reading. Now, having just talked about teeth, if you have your um, cam position bouncing around between a few different measurements and you can't seem to get a stable reading, don't go into the filter and try to filter that out. You need to work out why you're not getting a nice smooth cam position in the first place. The filtering, you know, I've, I've just seen too many people get the filter and wind the filter right up until they get a smooth sort of position, even though they've got maybe the number of teeth wrong. So effectively what that's doing is, is band-aiding the fact that some other part of your setup is not correct. So realistically, I've never needed to move the filter around much. Two, maybe three. I've never really used three, but if you're starting to get up around six, seven, eight type of filtering, then, and you still can't get an, a reasonably smooth cam position, well, you, you need to stop. You've probably done something wrong in another part of the software. So the filter is there as an aid it's not there to fix other problems. Now, just one other word on filtering. One thing you always have to remember about filtering, and this is the same for any sensor in the ECU, that the more filtering you have, the slower the response of that measurement will be, because quite simply, the filtering is you know, more or less averaging a number of different um, measurements. So, if you have a look at my little diagram to the right there, if we have a little bit of filtering, we get a nice, sharp, sort of uh, fast response to our signal. But you can see as we go through the green, the purple, and then the blue, as we raise the filtering, we will get a nice, sort of smooth type of um, position measurement, but you can see that it's slowing it down as well. So if you slow down the position measurement, any calculations done past that are going to be slow as well. So effectively, your if you filter the position measurement too much, you're going to slow down the cam control, and the whole thing again is not going to be very good. So again, if you need to run lots of filtering for some reason, you should probably go back and investigate your all your other setup because it, you shouldn't need a lot of filtering on these systems that I've found so far. Input zero, um, to start with, just leave that at zero. Um, this is something that I, I can't really explain well until we've we've gone through the uh, output setup and we've got the cams moving around. So just for the purposes of today, just assume that we're going to leave that at zero. Um, we're just getting the cam position set up at the moment. So just leave it. It'll be fine. Offset. Now, this is a rather important um, measurement. This effectively is, is like the crip for the cams. So it gives it a uh, more or less a reference to um, a certain position. With the crank index position for ref and sync purposes, we are giving the ECU an idea of exactly where top dead center compression number one is. Now, for offset, what we are trying to do is give the ECU an idea of what is zero degrees of advance for this camshaft. Now, again, if you go back to my previous uh, webinar, there's a bit more of an explanation on that. So what we want to do is we want to set an offset that means that when the cam is hard up against its fully retarded stop, that that position reads zero. Okay. So one other thing to mention is if you ever change the crip, so you find that maybe your crip is out by a couple of degrees and therefore your timing's out and you want to you know, more or less tidy up your, uh, your configuration, if you change the crip, you need to change the offset because this offset is based on effectively where's the next cam position tooth after top dead center number one. So if you change the ECU's idea of where top dead center number one is by the crip, then you're going to need to redo your offsets as well. So this is why I'm saying that the, the cam position 
still relies on correct setup of everything else. Okay. Now, and my last point there, you need to have the engine running for this to work. So once you have the engine running, it's a good idea to set up there on the, the right a uh, chart recorder for cam position. So let's say we've got the engine sitting running, um, let's say, uh, you know, 1,000, 1,200 RPM. It's always a good idea to do these tests at a point where you can guarantee that there's plenty of oil pressure to make these cams track the way they should. Uh, it's also a recommendation to make sure that the engine is up to temperature. Okay, so if we disconnect the cam solenoid, hopefully, and you know, as is with nearly all the engines that I've worked on, the cam should go back to its resting position, which will be the fully, uh, fully retarded position. Okay. Now, I can see that my cam position inlet measurement is saying that it's at minus 8.7 degrees. So that's not zero. I want to make sure that that cam position reads zero because, you know, if this is an inlet cam, it should be hard up against the fully retarded position and I want that to be zero. So if I have the engine running and you can see my little uh, chart recorder to the side, I'm going to just start going up in my offset and I can see slowly but surely it goes from negative back up to a nice uh, zero position. Now because we have say four teeth if this was our BMW mode 17 example. Four teeth means I can have four different offsets and each of them will be correct. So if your cam position starts off at, you know, say minus 480, you can simply do my little trick there of just going up in the offset until it goes to zero. Um, it just simply means that the reason it has four different offsets is because there's four teeth. So it doesn't really matter which one we start counting from. It will be equally as valid. So like I said, you could have four different um, offsets all for the same engine and all of them would be equally valid. So if you had six teeth, then there would be six offsets. So there's a couple of other tricks and tests for this. Um, I sort of mentioned them in my previous webinar, but um, once we get into the next webinar of actually getting the cam to be moving around, there is a couple of things where we need to go back and just check. So this is a accurate starting point, but don't think it, your job is completely finished at this stage. So, but for the purposes of uh, today's webinar, this is our starting point for the input setup. Okay, like I said before, um, with our Holden V6 Alloy Tech example, we can use the sink as the cam position as well. So that means the one sensor and therefore the one input wired into the sink input on the ECU is doing two jobs. Now you can see in purple there I've, I've gone to a different place in the software again. This is in the ref and sink sensor setup now. So what we can do is we can say okay well we haven't got a separate digital to be measuring this cam position. We're using the actual sync input. So with our ref and sync mode, the one that actually synchronizes and runs the engine, we've already set up things like uh, um, edges and number of teeth and all that kind of thing. So this sync cam position is, you know, the same parameters, but there's a couple missing because they're obviously set up in the uh, ref sync mode setup. So the channel, the offset, the filter, and the zero for sync cam position all do exactly the same thing as for a digital. So you just simply set them exactly the same way we've done for the rest, and then it will uh, mean that that sync sensor is doing two jobs. Now, in earlier software, I know some people might be uh, remembering earlier versions of software, we used to have to splice the sync sensor into a sync input and also a digital. So the sync input did the syncing and the digital did the cam positioning. We've effectively 
made the software so that you don't have to do the external wired part anymore, although it will still work. So there's a couple of different options there, but hey, why use up an extra digital input uh, if the sync cam position works like that? Um, and also having said that, you might need to just ask your local MoTeCA representative or send us an email on support because some modes work like this and some don't. Some of the modes still need the sync to be the sync and the cam position from that sensor be wired to a digital. So it is a bit of a case-by-case uh, -case sort of thing, but um, hey, that's what we're here for and that's what the forum's for and that's what support emails are for. So there are a couple of tricks, but um, this is the, the basics of how it all works. So thank you everyone for attending. Um, as with all our webinars, this has been recorded. So what we will do is shortly put this up on our website so you can download it and watch it again and um, hopefully tell your friends about it and uh, let everyone know. Uh, the um, webinar section of our website has um, all of our webinars on it, so it's a, a pretty good source of information. Also, uh, I would always suggest join our web forum um, it's a forum just like any other, but it's uh, full of smart MoTeC people. So if you know it's the middle of the night and you're, you're sort of stuck with a question, we can post that on the forum and hopefully there'll be someone around the world who can uh, answer it for you. So thank you for attending and uh, hope you can turn up for, my, uh, for part two of the CAM control.